buddy, Lawman Mike with www.lawmanguitars.com. Boy, I'll tell you, I'm just almost speechless when I'm playing this guitar. It is so cool. What I have for you today is a 1965 Gibson ES125 CD. Now, what does this 125 CD mean? Well, first of all, it's a 125. The C stands for cutaway, and then the D stands for dual pickup. So that's why it's called a CD. Now, it's not a TCD, which we're usually used to seeing in these guitars, which would have meant thin cutaway dual pickup. This is the fat body. Now, I'll tell you, when I saw this guitar in the shop, I just about went nuts. I thought it was a 175. I uh, uh, was uh, just really taken by it. I was not used to seeing a 125 with a cutaway. Most of them that you see are non-cutaways, and even in the wide models, I mean, for about every 10 that didn't have a cutaway, one would have a cutaway. So you just didn't see them, and they usually uh, only came as a 175 back in the day like that. So I thought, wow, this is an old 175. But it's not, it's a, it's a 125. Now, there's slight differences between the 175 and the 125. One is the fret markers. The 175 has the fancy fret markers. Uh, it's a little bit wider in the bout. Uh, and it has just a little bit different scale length, but other than that, man, it's still got the P90s, which you want to have in these guitars. They just sound fantastic, and I have... I've had such a blast listening to these. I had, uh, back uh, when I was just a kid, my first Gibson guitar was a thin uh, 125 that had the dual pickups and when I grabbed this guitar I think mine was a 59 so the neck might have been just a little bit fatter than this one but not a lot and when I got a hold of this guitar I went what is this this thing feels so familiar <laughs> and uh, I, I wish I'd kept that guitar I, I, I regret it all the time when I think about uh, having let it go but when I grabbed this one it's like oh my goodness this thing is just like the guitar I had when I was 15 uh, and it is just a remarkable, remarkable guitar. The pickups, I, can't, I cannot say enough about the, the uh, pickups, but we'll talk about those a little bit more in a minute. But anyway, it's got more of a cherry burst, uh, which uh, I like a lot as opposed to the brown burst that, uh, that you usually see, which speaks to it uh, being a 65. In 66, they got a little more brown, and 67, of course, they were almost all brown. And uh, it's not as light in the uh, amber area as, uh, as some of the others. So uh, I thought the color was just beautiful. But what is really cool is just all this finish crazy is just all over the front of this guitar and it just gives this guitar a museum look that you want to see in these mid-60s Gibsons uh, and it's just in beautiful, beautiful shape uh, from this top. Now from there, um, the, the uh, uh, tailpiece is original. Uh, we know it's original because it has a nickel top to it. The rest of it is chrome, but it had still had the nickel top, which uh, in 65, uh, they, uh, after 65, they quit using nickel on these guitars, so we know that was correct. Uh, it has the original bridge, of course, the pickups we've talked about. It has the original pick guard, which I was just shocked. Usually these are uh, reproduced. Uh, this one is still with it. It still has even the original uh, uh, hardware on it. The reflector knobs are still here. It looked like he had had some sort of something that he put in the sound hole here. There's a little bit of, of uh, looks like there might have been even an extra pot or something. I don't know what it would have been. Maybe a switch to, to do something. I have no idea what was in here. It was gone by the time I got the guitar. Uh, but something had been in there for a long time, so you'll see that when you see the guitar. Of course, it's got the right toggle switch on it and the switch selector. Uh, the back, uh, this is a used guitar, and it was a player's guitar, you can tell, uh, which we'll talk about as we go along, but it doesn't have real bad uh, a back a buckle what rash at all, but uh, I noticed this blue right in here, and it's right where it'll touch your belly or your chest, and I tried to get that off, and I can't get it off. I think this guy must have worn a blue or green shirt so much when he played that it just bled through onto this guitar, and I just finally said, okay, if I scrub anymore, I'm gonna start taking some finish off. I don't wanna do that, so I left it alone. Uh, I consider that a beauty mark on this guitar. It speaks to how much it was loved and played. Now, on the neck, uh, of course, a lot of the finish is gone, especially up here in the cowboy chord area. Uh, and uh, that speaks to uh, all the play that it's gotten. It does have the double line clues on tuners, which you want to see. And then we get to the parts that we don't want to necessarily uh, see on this guitar. But again, it's a player's guitar. This is not a museum piece. At some point in time, someone stepped on the cord as the guy was turning, and it busted out the input jack. 
So we have a jack uh, plate that was put in here and the uh, crack along here was professionally uh, fixed. So it is never going to crack here again. That's the strongest part of this side is where it was fixed, but it was cracked here. So we have an input jack uh, plate and a crack here. And then there was a crack on the neck right at the top here. Maybe that all happened at the same time. It didn't go all the way through. This is not a neck break where the headstock goes flying. That is not that at all. It just cracked. Now this has also been professionally repaired. Uh, I had my tech try to make it move at all and he couldn't get it to move. So it was professionally repaired. Uh, it is never going to break there again. Uh, it'll break up here, it'll break down here, but it won't break there anymore. That is a very solid uh, repair. So uh, again, this is a player's guitar uh, and it, uh, consider it as such. It is not a museum piece. It is not something that you're going to want to put in a vault. This is a guitar you want to play. Now, I cannot speak highly enough about these uh, pickups. Uh, the P90 Gibson pickups are legendary. Uh, just say P90 and any guitar player will just start rattling on about how great those pickups are. These are single coils. They are not uh, 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 humbuckers like uh, some of the Gibsons had in them. These are single coils. They are so warm. They are so toneful. They are so strong. Uh, it is just remarkable that uh, a 1965 pickup could sound like these do, uh, but this is why you buy a guitar of this age, is to get these kind of pickups. Uh, it even has on the back pickup, sometimes uh, it doesn't have the spacer. This one has a spacer, which I'll show you in a minute why you want to have that on, uh, on these guitars. Uh, uh, that neck pickup, which is where I would play all night on, is just fantastic. <laughs> Okay, let's go to both of them together. some lead uh, and be prepared this guitar really barks <laughs> both uh, volumes set the same. This, uh, this back pickup is so strong, uh, it, <laughs> you don't need to set your, your, your front pickup down to uh, compensate for it. They're both up full blast. <laughs>
guitar plays great from here to here to here. Uh, it does not need a neck reset. Uh, it, I don't believe it was ever reset. I think this is just a really strong angle uh, neck on it. Uh, it's just perfect. It just plays great. <laughs> Okay, so I could do that all day. You will not regret the decision of buying this guitar. Um, it is just remarkable. I love it. Um, I will be very sad when I ship this guitar, but happy for the new person who's going to get it because it is just a great guitar. Um, it has uh, some things uh, with it uh, that have uh, occurred to it over the years, but you know what? This guitar needs to be played. It needs to be played by someone who can uh, properly appreciate a guitar of this caliber. It is just a remarkable, remarkable guitar. So, enough. So, it came to me in the wrong case. So, I had a case awaiting a guitar just like that. This is a Lifton case. And it's kind of unique. Uh, it doesn't have the Lifton label on it, uh, but by all indications it is a Lifton case. Uh, and it was really in great shape, and it's re really cool. It has blue interior, which I, I'm not used to seeing, so I don't believe it would be a Gibson uh, case, uh, maybe a, a Guild or uh, not Gretsch, but maybe Guild. Uh, but the uh, back, restraint back restraint strap is still here. Uh, the blue interior is beautiful. The accessory box is still here. It fits the guitar perfectly. Original handle, latches. I mean, it just, it's a, a case befitting of a guitar like that. Uh, um, and like I said, I, I would not want to ship that guitar in anything but a, a proper case for it. This is a proper case. So you get this really cool case uh, and you get that remarkable 1965 Gibson ES125 CD guitar and uh, check it and all of our really cool guitars out at www.lawmanguitars.com. I don't know how you found this uh, uh, video, but uh, you can find them on Facebook and Pinterest and all over the place and just buy it through Google search. Uh, but uh, go to my website. It's www.lawmanguitars.com. That's where we sell all our guitars, uh, especially all of our nicer guitars like this one would be listed in our uh, uh, www.lawmanguitars.com website. And while you're there, make sure you sign up for our newsletter. I will communicate with you. I will tell you about new guitars coming out. I'll tell you some behind the scenes things with Lawman Guitars. I'll tell you some great guitar facts that maybe you didn't know before. And uh, I just really have a good time putting these together. So I'll look forward to communicating with you. I look forward to hearing from you. I hope that we can make a deal one of these days. If you buy this guitar, you will not be sorry. So check it and all our cool guitars out at www.lawmanguitars.com. I appreciate you watching this video. Check out all the others, and thanks a lot for watching today. <laughs>